Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the iBangla 100 subscriber special. Please rise for the International Apple Fan Army Anthem. Hey guys and welcome back to a new video on this channel. First of all, I want to thank everyone for falling into my subscription trap. It's pretty nice that there are people somewhere in the world who like this weird reviews and tutorials. But today I wanted to make a little different and special video to celebrate the 100 subs and give you some impressions of the beautiful iBangla recording and editing studio Hole 19 and of course of my Apple collection. Let's begin with my studio. It's gorgeous and designed for a maximum of convenience and simplicity. And that's why the iBangla recording and editing studio is pretty much my desk and the two square meters in front of it. On the desk we can find two monitors, a keyboard, a mouse I use in nearly every video to pimp up the background and of course my PC. But I guess the wall behind the desk is way more interesting. Here I store a few 30 pin cables. Okay, maybe more than just a few, I'm probably capable of charging every iDevice in a 2010s Apple store. At the same time. Above that you can find some broken and historical headphones and oh god, is that a charging cable for an Android phone? I expressly dissociate myself. In the center of the wall I hung a poster of my favorite K-pop band 50 Cent. And now we are coming to the eye shelves. Here I store my old eye devices to impress people who don't know that these apparatuses are straight from the stone age and assume I'm rich. And that's pretty much it. So let's come to the part most of you are waiting for. An advertisement for Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends is a mobile multiplayer... Just a joke. First of all, my iDevice collection includes many devices I love, but I'm still looking forward to extend it. Furthermore, I looked up what I paid for these devices, so you can get an idea how cheap and rancid my collection really is. Let's begin with the iPods. I own three iPod Touches of the first generation, plus one in a let's call it ripped apart condition. And only two of them are working more or less. This one's in a pretty good condition and came with the original packaging. It runs iOS 2 and will rot in my closet because I don't want any more scratches in that backside to be able to sell it for half a million bucks in 30 years. The second one was even less expensive. I picked it up for only 4 euros and it came with a modern looking and high quality case. The drawback? It was code locked and I had to break that lock with a crowbar called Preview Tools. Furthermore, the power button doesn't work. This one runs iPhone OS 3.1.3 and I really love that device because because of all the aspects I mentioned, despite the sucking ones. Okay, let's take a look at the second gen. I own just a single one which works, but that one's definitely in a mint condition. I bought it for just 13 euros and 70 cents with original packaging and it runs slow OS 4.1. And then I picked up two more for 50 cents each, but it would be more expensive to repair them than buying a new one on eBay. When it comes to the third generation, I own just one, and that's definitely one of my favorite iPods. It has 64 gigs of storage and I downgraded it to iOS 4.1, what makes this iPod a freaking beast. If you're considering to buy an iPod Touch, I would recommend the third gen or this one. Boy, what a transition. This is the fourth generation iPod Touch and it was my first Apple device ever. On this device you can find the origins of my criminal city I passed and you will find iOS 4.3.3 what makes this iPod Touch a beast too. The latest model of the iPod Touches I own is the fifth generation. And I guess it's the most famous device on this channel after I got scammed and beat it through nearly every iOS version existing for that iPod. Alright, let's take a look at my iPhone. So I don't own a second gen one because I would like to keep both of my kidneys, but when it comes to the third generation, I've got one and a half in my collection. I picked up this one for just six bucks. It runs iPhone OS 3.1.3, so it's pretty fast and gorgeous. And then I've got this one, which runs iOS 4.2, so it's pretty slow and I hate it very much and deeply. I just charged it for an hour and it's empty yet again. I hate you. I also got my sticky hands on an iPhone 3GS and I really like it because it looks like it's slow and idiotic older brother but it's like a quadrillion times faster. And now we come to the most disappointing part of this collection. The rape victims. These two iPhone 4 run... They run iOS 7. So they are dead for me, but luckily this iPhone 4S runs iOS 6 and it's remarkably fast and nice. By the way, back then I owned a black one too, but it blew up. Here are the remains. The 5th gen iPhone is one of my favorites and so I bought a black and a white one. The astonishing part about these two phones is that they aren't totally useless in 2020. They're still acceptable MP3 players and still support some modern apps. 
And if you think about the fact that you can pick those up for 20 bucks, it seems like a pretty okay deal. Above that, I own an iPhone 7 and an XS in a totally abused condition, but it has a pretty good camera and that's why I'm using it to record my videos. And that's it. For now. Like I told you, I will extend this collection with iPod Classics, Nanos and other nice Apple devices and for sure I'll let you be part of this. By the way, for some devices I created specific reviews. If you want to check them out, I'd recommend this playlist. So thanks for watching. I'll see you when I reach the 1 million subs. Adios amigos.